videos, I've introduced different types of free vortices and force vortices. Uh, one of these uh, free, well-known uh, free uh, vortices is the spiral free vortex, uh, which is a, a logarithmic a type of logarithmic spiral. Uh, this uh, type of vortex can be used to design a diffuser for a pump. Diffuser are elements in turbo machinery which helps us to recover, it means to reduce the magnitude of velocity and uh, to increase um, the pressure of the fluid. This way we can uh, decrease the losses, the hydraulic losses, and uh, consequently you know, we can increase the efficiency of the pump. Uh, there is, uh, this uh, figure shows the schematic view of uh, the pump from side view or meridional view. This is the axis of the shaft of the pump and this is the axis. Uh, this one is the impeller. Here is the, the eye of impeller and this section is uh, the inducer. Uh, this section is the um, leading edge of blades. And here is the trailing edge of the blades or the outlet of the impeller. I want to play, place a diffuser at the output, output of the impeller. This way I can convert the kinetic energy of the uh, outgoing flow into the pressure energy and uh, consequently reduce the losses in diffuser and in uh, volutes. If I want to design a diffuser for a pump, I have to compute the magnitude of the different geometrical constants. For example, uh, this type of diffuser is called the parallel wall diffuser. It means that we have two parallel walls at the outlet of the impeller, which is uh, axisymmetric. So uh, let's, we have to compute or we have to find a relation to compute the magnitude of B sub D, which is the distance between two walls of the diffuser, and also the radius of the outlet of the diffuser, shown by R sub D. Pay attention that if I have completed the design of this part of the pump, I have already computed the, uh, the width of blades at the outlet, and also I have already computed the radius of the impeller at the outlet. And the first step, you need to compute the width of the diffuser or the distance between two walls of the diffuser. Here there is a relation, I have written two relations or two engineering um, uh, recommendations to compute the magnitude of the distance between two walls. The first relation indicates that the distance is uh, a little bit uh, larger than the width of the blades at the, you know, at the outlet of the uh, blades. So I have approximately here one centimeter um, blade width. So one millimeter or two, two millimeters larger than the width of the blades at the outlet is a good suggestion. The second relation just, uh, indicates that the uh, width of the diffuser is uh, equal to the width of the blades at the outlet plus four percent or 5% of the diameter of the impeller at the outlet. Both of them can be used. So this way uh, you have computed the first geometrical uh, parameter of the diffuser. Start from the conservation of mass. As you know the flow rate is uh, 2 pi times r sub a. r a sub a shows the radius of the uh, input of the diffuser, which equals the radius of output of the impeller. B sub A is the width of uh, the diffuser at the inlet, and C sub MA is the uh, component of the absolute velocity along the radial direction. This one is the area, uh, the area here. The area of the output of the impeller, and uh, this one is the component of the velocity along the radial direction. Similarly, the flow rate at the output of the diffuser is 2 uh, pi 
times R sub D, which is an unknown uh, parameter, and I have to compute this new design parameter. And B sub D, which is equal to uh, B sub A, because uh, this is a parallel wall diffuser, and the distance between two walls of the diffuser remains constant. So you can cancel B sub A and B sub D. And based on the velocity triangle, the component or the projection of the uh, absolute velocity along the radial direction is equal to C uh, sine of alpha. Alpha is the absolute velocity of the fluid. You can see this is the velocity triangle. Uh, this one is uh, this side is the absolute velocity, and this is alpha. So the the projection of C along the radial direction equals C times sine of alpha. So after substituting this equation here, you will find out that the product of R, C, and sine of alpha should be remain constant based on the continuity equation. Similar, similarly, let's write uh, the conservation of angular momentum. This time, we know because there is no external source of torque, and also there is no dissipation of um, energy or dissipation of angular momentum due to viscous effects. So the angular momentum of the fluid should remain constant. A fluid particle which leaves the uh, which leaves the impeller along the direction with angle of alpha based on the velocity triangle and with the velocity of c and it should travel along a spiral free vortex because there is no external torque and there is no effect of viscosity okay and that uh, is uh, the, the mass flow rate which is constant based on the conservation of mass and this is the moment of velocity and uh, theta uh, equals uh, zero equals this constant so, uh, so based on the conservation of mass uh, and that can be combined with this constant and the moment of velocity should be a constant again based on the definition of the cross product uh, this uh, cross product of the radial coordinate and the velocity equals r c times r times sine of the angle between the r vector and the c vector uh, which can be seen in the figure that the alpha is the angle between c and u u is tangential to the circumferential uh, circle and r is in this direction so uh, the angle between the r vector and c vector is uh, p pi over 2 minus alpha so sine of this angle equals cosine of alpha so based on the conservation of angular momentum the product of c r and this time cosine of alpha should be a constant compare equations one and equation two you can uh, divide uh, two sides of equations uh, and you will easily find out that uh, sine of alpha over cosine of alpha should be a constant which is tangent of alpha and when the tangent of alpha is constant it means that alpha itself, uh, itself should be a constant and consequently cosine of alpha is a constant and in this relation this is a constant so the product of the velocity of the fluid particle along the free spiral free vortex and also the uh, the radial distance of the position of the particle, the product of these two quantities should be a constant. As you see here, the tangent of alpha is constant. This is exactly the same concept here. I have uh, obtained that the angle of the uh, spiral free vortex with the circle remains constant. So, in the parallel wall diffuser, uh, the position of the uh, fluid particle along a streamline is exactly similar to the relation of the logarithmic relation of the spiral of the free vortex. Uh, this way you can easily guess a magnitude or select a magnitude for velocity at the outlet of the diffuser. Uh, you have already computed the magnitude of the velocity at the inlet of the 
uh, diffuser based on the velocity triangle at the outlet of the impeller. This is the backward leaning impeller, and this is the velocity triangle at the outlet. So you have already complete alpha and C. And uh, so you have the product of C and R at the inlet of the uh, diffuser. So this constant is a known parameter. Uh, by selecting, uh, for example, you uh, want to recover or reduce the magnitude of the velocity by 30%. So the velocity at the outlet of the diffuser, diffuser is 0.7 times the velocity at the inlet. Then you can easily compute the radius of the outlet of the diffuser. And finally, I want to introduce the other type of the diffuser, which is this figure shows the geometrical details of a diverging diffuser. A diverging diffuser has a diverging angle, which is uh, shown by beta. Uh, as you know, if the this angle is greater than approximately 7 degrees, the flow will separate. Uh, then for the diverging wall diffuser, if you write the conservation of mass, you cannot cancel uh, the widths of the diffuser at the inlet and at the outlet anymore. So you have to keep the B uh, in this relation. So the product of B and R and C and C sine of alpha is a constant. Here we don't have B because B is can, has been cancelled uh, from the uh, two sides of the equation. But the conservation of angular momentum um, is completely similar to the previous case because B appears inside the flow rate which has been cancelled from the uh, relation. So the other terms have nothing, have no relation, have nothing to do with the widths of the blade. So the conservation of angular momentum is completely similar to the previous case. Again, divide both sides of the equation. You can find out that uh, the product of B and tangents of alpha is a constant this time. So the streamlines of the flow inside the diverging wall diffuser is not uh, the spiral free vortex anymore. Okay, uh, you have already computed the velocity, the widths of the blades, and the absolute angle, and the radius of the outlet of the impeller. Uh, after completing the design process for the impeller, so you have the product of b sub d tangent of alpha sub d, which should be constant. You have selected the value, a value for b sub d based on your uh, the size of the diffuser. So you can compute the magnitude of alpha d, alpha sub d, and may compute the magnitude of the radius of the outlet of the diffuser. And you, finally, you have uh, to check the magnitude of beta. Beta uh, can be obtained using geometrical relations in that tri triangle here, and other geometrical. There's a, a triangle here, and other geometrical details. And the, this angle should be less than seven degrees. The other point here is about the hydraulic losses or the efficiency of the diffuser. As you know, if you increase the load of the diffuser, I mean if you decide to uh, decrease the velocity uh, in the, at the outlet of the, fuse, the diffuser up to one third of the incoming velocity, so this is a big uh, velocity reduction. So the hydraulic losses greatly increase and the efficiency of the uh, diffuser decreases. This is a relation for computing the hydraulic uh, losses or the frictional losses inside the diffuser. Uh, eta sub d is the efficiency of the diffuser. Y minus uh, eta sub d times c sub r squared minus c sub d squared. C sub r is the velocity at the inlet of the diffuser and C sub d is the velocity at the outlet over 2 uh, times g. Eta d is the efficiency which in common applications is approximately equal to uh, 3 over 4, it means or 75 percent. If you substitute this suggestion in this relation, you will find out that the hydraulic loss is approximately uh, equal to one fourth of the kinetic energy head difference inside the 
diffuser. It means that if you, if you decrease the magnitude of the velocity at the outlet of the diffuser, the frictional losses or the hydraulic losses will increase. And also, if the efficiency of the diffuser is 100%, the losses are zero, which is not a realistic case, of course. 